Hey everyone, it's Job. I hope you're doing well. Today we are going back to the classics. We haven't done this in a while. We are journaling together today. And this time it's a little bit different. You probably have seen me journal in a traveler's notebook, regular size for most of my time on YouTube. Uh, but today I thought I would change things up, but it's still a pretty familiar size. So I am trying out the Traveler's Company Spiral Ring Notebook today. And this is just the regular um, like Spiral Ring Notebook with MD paper. So it's the paper that we all know and love the one that i use all the time in my traveler's company inserts but this time it's in a spiral ring notebook and this is a little bit different because you have a giant spiral coil in the middle of a notebook and it is not a thin insert similar to like the traveler's notebook inserts that typically have about like 64 pages unless you have you know the super lightweight or lightweight paper inserts so um it's a similar feel to you know journaling in a traveler's notebook because it's the same uh, size it's 11 by 21 centimeters per page or like a5 slim so it feels familiar but also feels different because there's a giant coil or ring in the center so i thought i would just share my process today um i should probably preface this by saying that we are doing two journal spreads right now so it's gonna be very sped up but i'll try to talk you through my process but basically i wanted to use this as a coffee journal so i want to log all the different coffee shops that i go to um some of these shops you know i've been to before so it's not going to just be like new coffee shops it's just gonna be any coffee shop that i go to and i think there's a lot of pages in these so i don't know if i'll complete this like anytime soon i think i'm want i want to like uh, venture out and actually discuss some of like the coffee uh, beans that i've been buying i don't know back in 2018 i was like really into um, like the tasting notes i went to like these coffee tastings at a local coffee shop and it was actually very fun but I haven't, you know, dived deep into that and I've kind of stayed pretty stagnant with like coffee and coffee culture as a whole, but I am rambling. I should tell you what happened on the screen. So we put a little bit of craft paper down because as you can see, there's like an, an orangey yellow like mark. I don't know what happened. I think I was painting and there was like a little stain on it. I don't know what happened, but we covered it up with some craft paper and then we put a little bit of red because i was cutting up a coffee cup earlier at the beginning of this video while i was introducing the theme uh for today's video and it's from aperture coffee um and if you remember the logo there was like a little like red star and i thought i would kind of carry that theme of red onto the right hand side of the spread by adding a little simple wash of red watercolor it looks a little bit more like peachy coral uh red but that's all right uh it gets the the job done and it conveys a similar vibe and then i did a really quick doodle of the table that i was at and i tried to make a coffee cup and i think this time i went no i used a pencil but i did a super super quick pencil sketch actually no that's a lie i went straight in with pen i remember journaling about this sorry this is a, from a few months ago actually um and i went straight in and i went for a, a, a very you know loose watercolor style i think that's the style that i go for when i watercolor in my traveler's notebook and i love how it looks it's just that very like messy you know the lines are kind of all you know you're painting beyond the line sometimes you're adding shading where you can and yeah i remember when i was at aperture there was this super tiny like table um at the coffee shop it was very tiny and it was very low and that's where i journaled for most of the time that i was there and i'm just drawing the notebooks that i brought with me uh there i brought this notebook too um and i had a wonderful latte there i don't know about you guys but do you like i don't know i feel like everyone is um an oat milk lover um i know that's pro partially because of like health circumstances i don't think i'm lactose intolerant but i feel like i'm definitely dairy sensitive i think a lot of people are um but i still i still drink like milk and have ice cream and stuff but oh there you go i tried to blend in that yellow um like stain uh with a yellow tombow uh but 
as you can see, it kind of just made it look worse. I have a tearaway calendar sheet here from my Typo Darium calendar. As you can see, this was actually filmed in November and it is currently March. So I apologize that this is old footage, but you know, um, I film a lot of these videos and sometimes they don't make it onto YouTube very quickly, but uh, that's okay. The the substance hopefully is what matters. Uh, but like I was saying, I, I wonder, are you a oat milk or almond milk? Like what's your alternative milk option? Leave it in the comments down below. But I'm definitely an oat milk lover. I still love a good almond milk though, but I don't know. I Every time I have like actual milk, I'm like, this is delicious, but um, I my stomach can't handle it sometimes. Um, now we're doing some stamping. I'm using this lovely Everyday Explorers stamp set that is a collaboration with my good friend Abby C. I think this is like the World Traveler uh, kit. It came with like a mini book kit, but there was stamps that came with it. And then I used my Traveler's Company, like, um, I don't know what they're actually called, but like the wooden handle stamps. I think there's like a set of six and I, um, I've told myself I would collect the whole set, but I only have four of them. I don't know if some of them have been discontinued. So that's a little bit of like a, Oh, I wish I, you know, collected it at the time. I, I think they're still selling it, but, um, you know, priorities change with stationary uh, wants and needs. So, uh, you know, I've taken a pause in collecting that um, stamp series, but they are lovely. Um, and then I finally put down the Aperture Coffee Bar Cup cut out basically i asked for a cup sleeve but you know how um coffee cup sleeves sometimes have a lovely stamp uh, with the logo of the coffee shop but they didn't which is fine so i just asked for an extra cup and i disassembled it so you got to do what you got to do i'm using this lovely stamp i don't remember where it's from i know it's from a blank note um online um which is run by my, a good friend um Nita and Season, and I purchased this when I was in person, but they have an online shop, manifesting an actual physical shop for them. But I believe it is from um, Yon Charm. It's from Yon Charm, and this like little, it looks like a dot stamp, but it's actually a latte art stamp that's also from Yon Charm. And I juxtapose, not juxtapose, that's the wrong word. I overlaid a few other dot stickers over top of it just because they felt kind of weird floating there and i chose like blush tones since most of the spread has like this red pink yellow vibe and i guess craft paper vibe going on along with the the, the painting that has a lot of um browns in it since i was um, drawing the actual notebook that i'm journaling in right now um i'm using a tombow fudenosuke brush pen in the hard tip my favorite like thinner brush pen um and then i wanted to use the soft Tombow Fudenosuke, but I actu actually don't know where it is. So I ended up using the, what is this? The Pentel Touch Pen uh, in black, which is equally good. Those are my newer favorite brush pens. I think like my OG favorite brush pen was the Tombow Fudenosuke in the hard tip, but the Pentel Touch Pens are still amazing. And they have been the ones that I've been using more um, as of late. Uh, and then we're just going in with some journaling. I am notorious for just like journaling wherever in terms of like a journal spread because I am very maximalist when I journal. Like there's little to no white space as usual. Uh, so I kind of just find places that um, can fit my writing. And honestly, the cafe journal uh, for this journal, like I don't want it to be a super writing heavy journal. I just want to capture the vibe and essence of the cafe. And if I can convey that through like ephemera and doodles, that's good enough. I don't need to, be, you know, I'm not uh, uh, a coffee shop reviewer, although that would be very fun, um, but I don't need to go into like full on Anthony Bourdain mode. Uh, I love Anthony Bourdain, by the way. Um, but yeah, I just put a little summary of that coffee shop and what I did there, um, and talked a little bit a little bit about the coffee. And I'm using the 2022 uh, pen uh, from Hobonichi. Is this 2022 or 2023? I, actually, no, that's a lie. This is the 2023 pen, um, the brown and blue one, which, you know, some people don't like, but I really love it. And I thank everyone who sent it over to me. 
uh, now we are working on another journal spread um, I went to I think this is my favorite coffee shop uh, in Vancouver this is uh, Nemesis coffee uh, they have three locations now um, they were I think named like the best coffee shop and best brunch uh, place in Vancouver like many years ago I think they have been dethroned for best coffee shop but still pretty up there in terms of like um, their ranking and in, uh, in terms of their brunch as well so very delicious I fortunately um, bought some baked goods from their bake shop they call it the, their dope shop um, but it's just baked goods um, and I had a box that actually had the stamp of their um, bake shop logo which is this really cute smiley face with its tongue out um, and I just cut it to like this kind of uh, trapezoid shape quadrilateral for uh, I don't know why we're going all math geometry here but um that's cut out and then now i'm fussy cutting this lovely um uh, floral um ephemera this is from a vintage botanical illustration book um i don't know which flower it is but i just saw the purpley blue tones and i thought that would match the overall vibe of nemesis since their logo is a upside down blue heart fussy cutting florals is next level annoying uh, i don't know maybe it's just me but i um lack a lot of patience when doing something like this i think um i just lack not the mental grit to overcome it but i just get really like lazy as well and i just want to put it down on the spread but i have to remember that you know when you take the time to fussy cut something it just looks so good and what i like about these floral elements is that you can kind of put a few um you know sprigs of you know your floral ephemera and put it over top of other um collage pieces to make it look really uh layered and you can do a lot of cool things where they intertwine and um, have different layers um, poke through um, without having to use multiple pieces. So you can put like a little overhang of um, a branch over top of um, a collage item to create some depth, but have the rest of your floral ephemera in the background. So you'll see here when I um, am placing the little... Um, nemesis logo part of the branch moves over top of um the the piece so there's like a layered effect there's that other leaf that i'm also gonna um use to layer and i think it looks really cool like they're kind of like tangled in a way like the leaves are growing over top of the um the nemesis element and it just takes a little bit of like um glue and you you can get this effect pretty um pretty easily so i'm gonna cut the overhang and this is the part where i'm always at a loss if i should use the overhang in a different journal spread or use it in the same journal spread but we'll keep that to the side um on the right hand side i thought i was gonna put it um and use it later but we we went for it we just glued it down right away and you might be wondering oh job's using glue um I do like using glue for this um, type of, uh, I guess, application because you get um, super precise and you can get glue on everything. Whereas the tape runner is very hard to maneuver in like these smaller spaces. Um, so yeah, we have that like little, is it blueberries? I think they are blueberries. This blueberry floral ephemera on both sides of the spread, which is nice because it um, makes a much more cohesive spread. Um, we have some scrap paper. This is actually uh, from postcard packaging. I think it was a pack of Capricorn themed postcards. I kept it because it was a cool paper with some cool print. And I'm going to use it as like a corner collage piece. And then I'm going to layer um, this um, calendar, this tearaway calendar sheet. This is from, again, 2022, since this is an older uh, pre-filmed video. But um, my friend April Penguins Creative actually sent that to me. And um, it's a lovely postcard that has different um, 
locations on each day different cities different um towns and a little illustration to go along with it which is super cool uh, i think for this day it was thailand which is super cool and it was 11 11 that day um, i also had these little berry and leaf pieces that came with the same page that um that the floral ephemera came from so i just repurposed it and then i was very bold here and didn't use any pencil but i just sketched the nemesis cup they have like this nice beveled cup that has like these like kind of starburst um elements on the bottom of the cup um it is a glass cup so i always struggle because i'm like how do i paint glass or how do i make it look glass like but um that's uh, that's a me problem i will give you uh <laughs> some tips once i have a little a bit more understanding of how to paint it but i just kind of pretended that it was again well glass is transparent it's not it's we're not pretending it's transparent um but i think yeah i still have a few struggles with how to like incorporate it or make it look a little bit more glass like but i did my best and that's all that matters um but i've been really liking this pocket palette from traveler's company x art toolkit um art toolkit is i believe a seattle no or a, a washington based um company and i would go check them out because they have these super super handy and small pocket palettes that are about the same size as a business card and i have a few paints in here and i use this for everything now like when i'm at home when i'm out and about it's just so portable obviously when you're at home it's nice to use like a bigger palette but i don't really mind it and i like having just like one thing that i use for watercolors um i can get very um carried away with like a palette because i want you know more colors but i always have to remember like you can always mix a color you can just it just takes a little bit more time but i guess at the end of the day you also learn a lot from mixing colors um so that's why i am using this palette even though i'm at home and i used um a darker uh color brown to add the details to add um, to the top of the latte and obviously use negative space to make the latte art and then i'm putting the upside down upside down heart logo um which is nemesis uh coffee's logo and I, I love that logo they have a tote bag or a shirt that i've been eyeing it's been years i've been looking at it for a while now but still haven't bit the bullet um and now I'm just typing, typing, I'm scripting out uh, Nemesis Coffee with that same blue that I use to add the heart and then like those little like blue accents beside the cup. Those blue accents, I don't know if I like them. They're a little too like uniform. Like they're supposed to be like, you know, those expressive like lines that you put on like um, comic books. Like it's like, wow, look at this. But it kind of just looks... A little odd that's one thing i would change but honestly that's fine it's just a small minor item and again it adds more blue to the spread uh but this is the completed spread i added some stamping it's just a small little coffee cup on the top right corner of the right um page and that's it we're gonna go through different um spreads but this was the earlier spread i went to two coffee shops that day that's why there's two entries for 11 11. um but yeah i had a blast showing you how i journaled in this notebook it was actually very familiar felt like i was just um journaling in my traveler's notebook but the one thing that i do have to uh, mention is that there is a, a coil down the center or the spine of the notebook so um you just have to keep that in mind when you're like working on the left page um sometimes you're um if you're right-handed you just have to maneuver your hand over the coils but it's the same thing if you're left-handed um working on the um right hand side of the spread might be a little bit harder but that's the only obstacle and it's pretty negligible um because you can always put something underneath the page that you are having trouble writing in so it lifts the page up to the same level as the rest of the notebook but I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out, my friends. Be sure to check me out on Patreon for more exclusive content. There is a camp-themed um, like month this month, and uh, there are uh, some printables up already. So I will see you there, and I will see you on YouTube. So stay tuned. I will see you in the next one. Love you. Bye. Joe Branghe.